were you listening to all the like <laughs> we're good. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I'm Kara Hair, like I was mentioning before. Uh, we'll keep it kind of casual, um, just because it's a small crowd tonight. But uh, one of my passions is really talking about picky eating, helping families really um, get off the mealtime struggle bus. I know it can be a really big headache um, and then frustration when you're at the meal, at the dinner table, and you've prepared this meal, and then your kids don't eat it, um, and you get frustrated, and your kids might get frustrated, and then it just snowballs from there. And so I really, there's, picky eating is common, and it's normal, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so that's kind of what my passion is, is helping parents get the tips and like some tools to take home with them and know like, oh, this is, I have some things in my back pocket now that I can pull out and use when it's dinner time or um, things like that. So a little bit of background on me. Um, I'm a registered dietitian, uh, just where I've been. I went to Iowa State. I'm originally from Iowa, so I went there for my, um, I guess, bachelor's, and I stayed there and got my master's in nutritional science. And then to become a dietitian, you have to do a dietetic internship. And so I went to OSF St. Francis Medical Center uh, in Peoria, Illinois. So I was there. And then, you, I don't know if you ever go to the Fitchburg Hy-Vee, um, that's where I went after that, so I was there for the past five years um, as a dietitian there. Uh, and then within the last year or so, I um, left there and started my own private practice. So I have two specialties, family and childhood nutrition, six months all the way on up, and really I love that niche, niche of um, picky eating is kind of like just a really small, a big passion of mine, but I, I focus on all areas of it. Um, from feeding all the way from six months on up. And then the other side is um, adult nutrition, really focusing on mindful eating, intuitive eating, and getting past um, the non, like the diet mentality and getting past that to doing like a non-diet mentality. So anyway, that's kind of like my focus. Um, and then tonight, so if you have any questions on that, feel free to ask me too, but tonight we'll talk about the picky eating um, stuff. And feel free to ask questions along the way. I'll kind of keep it formal just for the recording, but feel free to ask whatever and interrupt me because it's not a big deal and I that's I want to be able to help you as much as I can. So just a little background on what we're covering, um, a background just on selective eating, and I use selective eating. Um, I know I was saying picky eating just because that's what everybody uses, but picky eating, if you keep saying that, your kid can um, kind of fulfill that. They're like, oh, I'm a picky eater, so I'm going to continue to be picky and so selective eating is just a, a nicer way of saying it I guess and um, just because they might be more selective in what they're eating doesn't mean that they're necessarily always going to be a picky eater uh, and then division of responsibility is the foundation so I'll kind of talk I'll talk a lot about that um, are you familiar anybody familiar with the division of responsibility heard that before is that like you pick where when yes. and then they pick how much yes of that okay perfect yep so I'll kind of um, review that a little bit, so you kind of have an understanding of it, but I'll, I'll, that's basically the, the basis of it. And then we'll talk about common nutrition concerns that people have, common phrases to avoid, um, that you might think are helpful, but actually are detrimental um, for your child. And then how to respond when your kid says, I don't want to eat this, or can I have this? So things like that will give you some ideas on what how to respond to that. And then practical tips, and we'll kind of some of these will go through quickly, but if you want the PowerPoint, just let me know and I can email it to you too, because we might not get to all those things. Um, all right, so why is my kid picky? A lot of times I hear this, of like, my kid used to eat everything and now they don't eat anything. Um, I don't know if you can relate to that, but that's totally normal. Uh, usually you're in that honeymoon stage from like six months up to like a year and a half, maybe two years old. They eat like whatever you put in front of their plate. Life is awesome. And then something switches and you're like, seriously, what just happened? Um, and that's really normal. They have, it's rarely about the food. So just keep that in mind. It's really about their independence of, oh, I can say no or yes, and then I get a response for that. So they're just kind of um, figuring that out, not just for food, but everything in life. You might see a little more resistance. Um, and then also food is a learned skill. So just think of it as like if you go abroad and you get introduced to maybe some food that you've never had before or it's presented differently it's kind of weird just like i don't know how to eat this um, this is weird to me and that's kind of the same thing for kids they've never seen some of these foods before even if you think butternut squash is totally normal and they don't know why they aren't eating it to them they might not have never seen it before 
um, if you've never really exposed it to them. So they, to them, it's brand new. And so just kind of keeping it in mind of they're still learning a lot of these food skills um, and these new foods. Um, and then also growth has slowed down. So that first year of life, they grow like triple their size. Um, and then after that, it really slows down. So they might not be as hungry anymore. And then also lastly, it's kind of a result of food that they've eaten already in the day. So kids are naturally really great at being intuitive eaters. So they listen to like when they're hungry and when they're full. And so by the end of the day, they, already, they may have already met their calorie needs based on if they've grazed a lot throughout the day or if they've had a lot of snacks and meals. By the end of the day, they might just not be that hungry. Um, so if, they, if you do sense that, you could um, emphasize breakfast uh, as um, kind of make sure that that's like, if they eat really well at breakfast time, really have a good hearty breakfast so that you know that they're going to eat really well then. And then just um, a lot of times, like your love for your kid can make it a lot harder. So keeping that in mind too, I know as parents, you want to see your child um, getting enough calories, enough nutrients, you want to see them grow, uh, you want to make sure that they're they're happy, you want to like if they say I'm hungry, you don't want to be like sorry I'm not going to give you anything and so that love for your child can really make it harder too. Um, so just that can actually lead to more harm than good so keeping that in mind too of um, there's that emotional side that can make it even harder. So just want to say that I recognize that um, it's part of what I'm talking about may seem like you are so cold hearted, um, but I recognize that it makes it a lot harder when you have that like attachment there. Um, okay, so the divisional responsibility, this is like that foundation um, on really holding your ground and this is if you can follow these, really the division of responsibility is fairly simple, it's not as easy to, to actually do, but if you can get this then that, that will help a lot. Um, so in essence, it's you provide your child the sides, um, if you want to keep it as simple as that. But going a little deeper, like you mentioned, uh, you have a role and your child has a role, and they never intertwine or they don't overlap. Your roles stay separate from your child's roles. Uh, so again, like you said, your role is when, you, when they're eating, when your ch what your child eats, and where your child eats. And then it's your child's role to decide whether or not they're going to eat, and how much they're going to eat. So just to break that down a little bit, so you decide when your child eats. So if your kid says, mom, I'm really hungry, can I have a snack? Or just say, like, even if they're not really hungry, like, can I have a snack? Um, you can say, hey, sorry, uh, we're having a snack in, an, snack time's in an hour. Um, why don't we go play, and, like kind of distract them a little bit, but holding, like, you haven't decided to have a, you've decided to have a snack at a certain time, and if it's not that certain time, be like, hey, let's, um, that's, snack time is in a half an hour, or it's an hour, or we're going to be eating dinner in an hour, um, have some water, or we can go play for a little bit, and kind of redirect them in that area. Um, and that's, that's a way of um, doing that, when you're going to, to serve that meal. Or if they say, um, that's after dinner, and they say, oh, I'm, I'm really hungry, can I have a snack? That's when you can say, um, like, sorry, I know that, or you chose not to have dinner tonight, or you chose not to really have a lot at dinner tonight. Our next meal, the kitchen is closed, so make sure that you say, like, the kitchen is closed right now, but, and then tell them when the next meal will be. So, but we'll be having breakfast tomorrow morning, and we'll make sure that you have, um, like, make sure that you have a good hearty I have breakfast. a question about this. Yes. So, okay, so we have a two and a half year old, and we always tell them, like, you know, you don't get a snack later if you don't eat all your dinner. Mm, okay. um, or like you can have, you know, if you're hungry later, you can have whatever you didn't eat of your dinner. Okay. Um, whether that's good or bad. I don't okay. know. But you know, yeah. it's like, okay, if you don't eat this, you're not getting it. But then my husband's a late night snacker. So, so he sees, he yeah. sees like, you know, how do you justify the sure. kitchen's closed? If right, Dad is snacking? right. Um, can he wait to snack until after? Yeah, I mean. And one thing that like, so like, I mentioned. Not going to um, kill him, of course. You mentioned like you don't get a snack if you don't eat your dinner. So that would be something instead of saying if like as a, it's kind of like a consequence. Um, you can decide, okay, we just don't have snack at all or we do have snack. Um, and so it's not whether or not he eats or not. Yeah. Um, so if you think, okay, I don't know when dinner is for you guys, but if it's early, depending on how much time is there, if he does need a nighttime snack, um, that kind of leads into what? So just maybe you, he only gets some milk or something like you can offer that snack 
Yeah. Um, but if it's not what he wants, sorry, this is what I'm offering for a snack. You can either have this or we'll go to bed. Yeah. Um, and so that way you, you've already decided, yes, we're having a snack tonight or no, we're not. It can be either way. It doesn't matter. Um, but that way it's not like, oh, sorry, you don't get it. Or you can bring out the leftovers from dinner if you want. Um, that's really fine too, but you've already decided what you're going to offer. Um, so that might help too. So it's not like if you don't do this, then you don't get that or whatever. Yeah. It's just we do have a snack or we don't. Um, going back to like if he says that he's hungry and he's like, oh, sorry, like kitchen is closed until breakfast and it, your husband's not eating or I know that makes it a little challenging. Um, granted, he will be like he will be hungry, but he won't starve. And then the next day, yeah. it takes a while, but he'll be like, oh, I know that I'm not getting a snack anymore, so I better make sure that I have enough at dinner time. And so it takes a while. Like, it's definitely those hard days in there while they're figuring it out, but kids learn pretty quickly, especially when it comes to food. Like, oh, I'm not going to get whatever I want for my snack at the end, like, in the evening, so I better eat what I'm going to yeah. have, what, what's offered. So great, great question. Does that kind of answer? Mm -hmm. Um, so then what your role is, I'll go to where, so then also where, so ideally we want to eat always at the kitchen table or the counter, away from distractions. Same with adults, we never want to be eating in front of the TV or working while we're eating, just because then we, we're distracted, we're not really in tune to thinking about if we're sat, like getting satisfied or we are more likely to overeat then because we're not really thinking about what we're eating. Same with kids you decide where they're going to be eating. Um, hope, and it might be a fun thing like, hey, tonight we're going to be eating, watching a movie while we eat, and that's like a special treat. But ideally, um, where you're eating is, is at the table. So you decide that, and then what um, you're eating. So that kind of just releases that pressure of being a short order cook, of like, oh, you don't like this, so I'm, only, I'm gonna serve you this instead. Um, and then I've also heard a lot of, oh, do you want blueberries for a snack, or do you want chips, or do you want crackers, and offering all these things and kind of saying, like, what do you want? Instead, and I've heard that a lot with parents of, oh, they don't eat carrots, or they don't, so they only have these five things that they eat, but I'm like, well, do you offer the other things, or is it because, because you think that they only eat those five things, you just keep offering those five things? Um, so what you could do is have blueberries with carrots and ranch, if they don't eat the carrots, they don't eat the carrots. You might think, well, that was a waste. Um, but it wasn't because they get that exposure, at least. So they're at least seeing it, and they're and maybe the next time they're, they might be more apt to, to try it. Um, or I have a question. question. Yeah, so like your, your next thing there with the how much. So like let's say you do offer, you know, carrots and ranch and blueberries. Yep. Well, they didn't eat their carrots and ranch. They ate all the blueberries. They want more blueberries. Yep. Yep. Exa yep. You're not the only one that's had that question. So. That's where I go, we'll jump into there. So how much, they did, so that's their job is decide how much, and it can be, they didn't touch their carrots, but they want more blueberries, they can have more blueberries. So it's really hard, especially at mealtime, at snack, it's like, okay, we'll give you, I, we'll give you more blueberries, it's healthy. Like my son would probably just eat a pint of blueberries for dinner, and that's it. Right, you know? so, <laughs> so yeah, and that's the thing of, I guarantee he won't do that every single meal. At first he might, because he's like, oh wow, I can have all these blueberries, and he fills up on them. But over time, he'll probably get tired of it. Um, and you don't have to offer blueberries at every meal. You just, so maybe you only offer fruit at snack time. And then at meals, you offer the vegetable and the, the main meal or whatever, but you don't offer the fruit um, just because you, you want him to have more variety. Or you know, okay, he's already had fruit at breakfast and at a snack. Well, I wanna make sure that he's getting kind of that overall balance throughout the day, or at least offering that balance. And so then, um, maybe not having um, fruit at that at the meal that day. Um, but yeah, if he doesn't, like, so for a meal and you offer strawberries or whatever with the, the meal and that's, he hasn't touched the protein or the vegetables or anything, and he says, can I have more? It's, that's his decision. That's, and kind of refraining from saying, oh, you've already had too much, or you have, are you sure you're, um, are you sure you've eaten enough, or eat this and then, I can give you a little bit more of that. And that's kind of um, showing like distrust, I guess, for like his way of being able to regulate his body of being that intuitive eater of knowing, kids are really good at knowing when they're hungry and when they're full. And so if we push more food on them or tell them like, oh no, you shouldn't eat more of those, then it might disrupt that a little bit and they start to eat because of a reward or 
because they feel like they need to please you. Um, and so that's where that can get into to play too. So we really want to just let them give them that trust or like show that you trust him to decide how much he needs of things. Um, and if he gets a stomach ache from blueberries or whatever, then that's all the better almost because then he'll learn a lot faster. Like, oh, that maybe, or with Halloween candy for instance, of so like letting them have, you've offered it, this is when we're having it. Um, and he gets as much as he wants at that time and you're offering it. And he might get a stomach ache, um, but then the next time he'll learn like, oh, actually that, that didn't feel very good. And most kids will have a few pieces and then they're like, I'm done. Um, if it's not like a restricted food or something like that. Um, and then whether or not, so if your kid doesn't eat, then he doesn't eat and that's not your job. So you, that takes like the pressure off of you. Like you don't have to feel, oh, I need to make sure that he's eating. Let me like force the food in his mouth or um, give him what he wants or whatever, just to make sure that he's eating. That's his job. So if he doesn't want to eat, that's fine, but just let him know, like, maybe at the end of the meal, okay, we're closing up in five minutes. Like, this is your last chance. We, the next time we eat won't be for another three hours at the snack time or breakfast or whatever. So kind of letting him know, like, this is when the next time will be that we're eating. So he kind of, I mean, I know that he's young, but just knowing it's not going to be right away. So if you're still hungry, that's, I'm sorry, but this is when yeah. we're, we're offering it. So um, any other questions with that. I'll dig in a little more I'm deeper. Sure I'll have more yeah, good. Um, and I've kind of touched on some of this already, but why it works, it de decreases your pressure for the parent. Um, so it's not up to you, I think I already touched on this, whether or not you want your child eats or not. And then it provides them autonomy. So it, that's where it shows them that you trust him to know how much he needs to eat. Uh, and then that just helps him to build that positive relationship with food. Because if you're always pressuring them to eat or taking away food, that's when they can start to get confused, I guess, and eat out of reasons outside of their hunger. Um, so one family, one meal, so no longer a short order cook. We really want to get away from that of like, oh, they're not having this, so I'll just grab those chicken nuggets or I'll just grab the fish sticks. But be like, no, this is, this is what I've made for today. This is what we're having. And if he says, hey, I want fish sticks or chicken nuggets or whatever, be like, sorry, bud, we're not having that tonight, but maybe we can look at it to have it on the count or the, the meal the menu next week. Um, so I'm saying like, we're not having it now, but I understand that you want this and I'll honor that, but not tonight, maybe in a, a week or so. Um, so make sure, and then follow through with that. If you say that you're going to offer it again or another time, then actually go ahead and offer it. One thing with this seems um, really like severe is like, this is what you get, sorry. You always want to make sure there's a safe food. Um, and that, just so you know that if he is actually hungry, he will have something that he likes to eat. So if you're offering lasagna, and he's really not a fan of lasagna, but you know he likes, you could always have bread and butter out. Like every single meal you could always, if, that, if that's what you want your safe food to be, that's a, and it has to be offered for the whole family then. So it's not something that's just offered to him, it's at the table, anybody can have bread and butter. But then you know, okay, if he doesn't eat anything else, if he's actually hungry, you know that he'll have the, the bread and butter. Or it could be, um, say he really loves macaroni and cheese, you're offering that, you could, that'd be a great time to offer broccoli or something that he might not be as open to, but you're still giving that exposure for him. Um, the best, I mean, always, we could try to have a vegetable every single meal just to keep on offering those exposures. <laughs> Even though it doesn't sound very good to you, maybe just lunch and dinner like and snacks, you don't have to do it for breakfast, but at least then it's always like, an ex the more exposures he gets, the better and the faster that he will like certain foods and so even if he doesn't touch it it's still a victory because he saw it he might have touched it he might have smelled it and those are all good exposures um, so going back to the safe food um, really just I mean basically just having something that you know he will eat and there are times when you like say he really loves I don't know macaroni and cheese one day he eats all of it the next day then you serve it because you're like oh I know he really likes it he doesn't touch it at all and you're like okay now now what but Granted, that's totally normal, and the next time you offer macaroni and cheese, he may really eat it, like eat all of it again. So it like don't feel like okay now he doesn't like this food. It might just be like that one day. Um, so who knows? But don't. I think for any foods, don't be like okay he doesn't like it. I'm not gonna offer it again, but just keep offering it. Um, even the foods that he you know that he likes. Okay, I'll just kind of briefly run through these, through these but I, there's. Some current concerns that I hear a lot from parents, and one is my kid isn't eating enough, he hardly eats anything. So just reassurance here, 
Um, one thing, what looks really small to us, like really small, is actually a lot to them. Um, and if they're following the growth chart, if they're growing, then they're doing just fine and you shouldn't, you don't have to worry about it. And then appetites vary day to day. So even though they ate really well one day, and then the next day, or maybe, maybe say he didn't eat very well one day, then the next day, you, he actually might eat quite a bit. So it doesn't, it's not just like every single day is the same, it'll, it'll fluctuate a lot. Um, and then just this is, Rule of thumb, so one tablespoon for every year of age, so like two tablespoons is a serving for for your son. Uh, and so really it's not that much. It could be like one to two tablespoons of meat, um, a fourth of an ounce of nuts or seeds, uh, two to five tablespoons of pasta or rice. So that's like an, less than a fourth of a cup. So it's really, really small amounts. So when you think, oh, he didn't really, he kind of nibbled at it, didn't really touch much, that might have actually been quite a bit for him. Um, same with like, Fruit, usually kids don't have a big problem with fruit, but it's really not too much. A half a cup of milk or yogurt. Um, so really keeping that in mind, if you don't think he's eating very much, it might be more than you'd actually think. Um, my kid only eats carbs and bread is another common thing. Um, so just a little background that carbs are fast energy. Um, it's just known, like that's why runners or athletes, they really like carbohydrates because your body can use it really quickly. Um, if you, That's what our our cells prefer is carbs for, or glucose for energy. And so it's fast energy and their bodies are growing, so they need a little bit more. They need a little bit faster. Uh, and then also their first food was milk, so carbohydrates are sweet like milk, so it's a comfort food almost for them, like any, I think anybody. Uh, and so what you can do is you can just provide whole, whole grains more option, options more often. Uh, and then remember that you decide what your child is served. So if you do think, okay, breakfast, lunch, he really had a lot of, like that's really all he ate was, because again, he decides what he's eating or, or how much he's eating of what's offered. And so maybe for dinner you'd be like, okay, maybe I won't offer the bread and butter and we'll maybe some kind of vegetable that I know he likes or something like that. And then the last concern is about protein. So kind of similar. My kid won't eat any protein. I don't know how he's still growing. And this is um, very similar. So again, your child doesn't need as much protein as we do. So for like a two-year-old, they only need two ounces of protein per day. Um, so whereas for adults, we need three ounces per meal is recommended. Usually we get well over that. Um, but for them, it's like um, a scoop of peanut butter and an egg would be the amount of protein that they need. So it's, it's very, very small. Um, briefly, is this toddler getting enough protein? Uh, so just real briefly, there's not any meat there. There's oatmeal, banana. For snacks, he had milk and graham crackers, apple slices, a cookie, bread, peanut butter, snap peas, plain, just plain pasta and string cheese for dinner. So what do you think? Enough protein? Not enough protein. Kara thinks there is enough protein. Based on the peanut butter, yeah. And the cheese and the milk. Yeah. yeah. So yep, so it totally, it adds up. Where, so you, if you want to know how many grams you're, I mean, getting into grams of, of protein, I'll say you have to really like calculate out grams for your toddler, but it's usually about half of their, their weight. So if uh, this toddler is 40 pounds, um, 20 grams of protein is what he needs. So he was over that, he had 25 and a half. So even if it doesn't really look like, oh, I don't really know if he ate too much, um, it really adds up, like if you're, I mean, obviously the milk and the cheese, but even like oatmeal has a good amount of protein in it. Snap peas, I mean, for a half a cup, one and a half grams is quite a bit. Bread has three grams. So all, even those carbohydrates can give you quite a bit of um, uh, protein. Same with the plain pasta with two grams. Cookie gives you one, so that's a bonus. <laughs> uh, okay, so phrases to avoid. This is something that parents usually find really helpful. And I, I printed this out just because I won't go over all of them. That way you can take it home with you too and, and get some ideas. Um, so the phrases that you say today will actually impact your toddler's relationship with food in the future. So not to make it sound like this is like a deal breaker, like wow, you've totally messed up your toddler or anything like that. But these are things that, there's things that you say that you think this is what you just think is normal, but your child is hearing something different and so there's things that you can say instead. So for, in, for instance, have one more bite, then you can leave the table. That's that negotiation of, if you don't do this, then this, or do this, and then I will offer this. 
Um, and that's when your child might hear like, oh, my mom doesn't trust me as, um, when I say that I've had enough and I'm full. And that's where they feel like, same with if you, you have to eat this before you can have the cookie. Then they think, oh, well, I really want the cookie, so I'm going to eat this even though my body's telling me that I am full. Um, then they eat outside of that, that fullness, and that's when they start to lose that relation, um, the ability to be able to tell, like, oh, I need to stop when I'm satisfied. They'll just keep eating past that moment. Um, so what you could say instead is, if they're saying, like, oh, I'm done, you can kind of ask them, like, to think through, like, is your tummy saying that you've had enough, or how, what is your tummy telling you? And that way they can kind of start to think about that a little bit more of, okay, what, how am I feeling right now, rather than, they might not even think about that, but if you kind of verbalize it and let them communicate how they're feeling, that would be a, a good instance. And then if they say, you could also rephrase of, remind them like, okay, the next meal won't be for another whatever hours. Um, showing emotion, so again, if you don't eat this, then I'll, not that you'll say I'm going to be mad, but if you start showing that frustration, um, that can start to make them not like dinner time because they associate it with this frustration, this stress, and that's what happens with a lot of families, and then it's really hard for get, to get their child to come to the table, and that before they even get to the table, then you're getting already frustrated, and it just is a cycle. Um, so you could just say everybody likes different foods, um, and then also use descriptive words. So rather than saying this is yummy or this is yucky, um, which hurts the person that actually spent the time to make the meal, if you say, if they're saying like, oh, this is yucky, encourage them to say word, descriptive words. Um, so this is crunchy or this is too squishy or slimy or whatever. And if you're using those descriptive words, then it helps them in the future be able to learn that vocabulary and be able to explain it. Maybe you can say like, what? how can I make this better for you or yummier for you or what don't you like about it? Then they can actually verbalize, oh, this is what I, it gets too, I don't know, bland or whatever. It's too squishy or crunchy or whatever. And that way you know like, oh, I can, I can make it different next time. Um, instead of saying like, eat the broccoli, it's really good and healthy for you. I'm all about nutrition and like health and everything obviously. But um, the dinner table is probably not the right time to tell them like what's healthy and that's not. For one, kids don't really care. That's not going to be like an incentive for them to eat more. Uh, so what you could say is the soup will give you energy to play outside, help you grow strong. So those kind of things they can relate to. Um, and then you can have the cookie once you finish the peas. I kind of mentioned that. Like Then you're elevating, so you have this you really want to keep all foods neutral, so rather than have the dessert as like a reward or making it seem like a better thing, or like, yeah, elevated than all the other foods, you really want to keep it on the same playing field. So again, you could say, we can try the peas another time. Um, and you could say, next time do you want them raw instead of cooked, or kind of how do I make them better? And then you still always offer the cookie. Offer the cookie. So if you've decided, same thing, if you decide what. So if you've already decided in advance that you're going to offer dessert tonight, maybe you offer dessert two times out of the week or three times, whatever, five times out of the week. Um, even if they don't eat anything, you still always offer that dessert if you've already decided in, in advance that you're serving dessert for that night. Um, that way they know it's not contingent on, con contingent on whether they ate or not. They they'll still get that dessert no matter what. So it kind of levels it all out for you. And you could even offer the dessert with the meal too. And I've, off, I've mentioned that with parents because then it's it really is, they know that they'll get it because it's with the meal and they can decide maybe they want to eat it first or they want to save it for later. Um, and then over time, if they know it's not restricted or something that's off limits, you'll, you'll find that may, maybe they only eat like half a cookie and they actually might not make it into a big deal because you're not making it into a big deal. Um, I kind of mentioned this, you're such a big girl, you finished all your meat. So that's where you're desire, congratulating the desired result and that's the opposite of then even though um, they want to keep on eating because they know that they get congratulated or that you feel like, they feel like they've done uh, a good job um, when they've eaten everything, even if they're past their level of fullness. Um, so what you could do, again, is, is your stomach telling you that you're full? Is your stomach still making its hungry, growling noises? So that's a way to, to ask them that. Uh, let's see. Um, I think...
it's pretty much, oh, there's another one. So there are no vegetables in your smoothie. I don't know how, why it's green. So hiding vegetables in food is really common where they like puree it in or whatever. And that's totally fine. Um, I would recommend mentioning it that it's in there because they may start to feel like, what else has my mom hid it, like hid into my foods or, um, yeah, they might, that trust is, isn't there then. Um, and so they might get concerned with that. What you could do then is like, you could mention like, what's that secret ingredient? Do you know what it is? Um, and then I would really recommend offering the food in whole form as well. So even if you do want to puree the spinach into the sauce or the smoothie or whatever, um, offer it as a whole form too, just so that they get an idea of what it is. Otherwise they'll never learn um, kind of to appreciate, like they'll never actually learn to like it because it's always been hidden. So just keep on off again that exposure. If you're, obviously it's on hand because you're pureeing, pureeing it or you're mixing it in. So just offer some in whole form too. And it could be like shredded, like really small amounts. So like shredded zucchini, like shredded, just make it like really tiny. The more you offer, the more overwhelming it is. So if you just have it in little bits, it's less overwhelming for them. Um, so this is how to respond to your child. Uh, and I think I kind of went over some of these already, but I want a cookie if they say that, and it's not a time when you're, so again, when um, you're not offering, it's not a snack time and you didn't plan on having a cookie. Um, you could say, we're not having that right now. Um, instead of saying like, oh, cookies are bad for you or we don't eat cookies or whatever, um, you could say, sometimes we eat cookies, sometimes we don't. Right now we're serving, I mean, that would be at breakfast, cereal or whatever. Uh, you don't have to eat it if you don't want to. So you can always say that if they say, I don't want to eat this, or this is gross, you can s just real calmly, always stay calm, and just say, you don't have to eat it if you don't want to, and you just, but you have to sit here while we eat. Um, probably they're going to pick at it and eventually eat it. As long as you don't make a big fuss about it, um, they'll be like, oh, that didn't work. Like, that independence of throwing a fit or anything, or something, that backfired, I might as well just go ahead and eat this. So. Just, I think the main thing is really just stay calm and be like, that's okay, you don't have to eat it, that's fine, and then you just go about like talking about whatever at the dinner table, avoiding the topic of food altogether, but just talking about something else. Um, so really, like when you're eating, just avoid talking about food, I guess. Um, you can say it tastes really good, or like, oh, I, I like the crunch of this, or whatever, but in general, just kind of uh, avoid the, the topic of pushing things on them. So when you're at the grocery store and they're like, can I have this, or I want this, uh, if it's not on your list, you can say, well, that's not on our list. And then one thing that helps is um, have them take a picture. So you can be like, oh, you can take the picture so that we can remember it for next time. And just that act, they feel like they have um, like autonomy and they feel like they're a part of it. That usually helps like um, kind of reduce the escalation that could happen. And then I think I mentioned this, if I don't want to eat it, I, I want chicken nuggets. You can say we're not having chicken nuggets tonight. Um, you can add it to the menu later. Um, but you have to sit at the table as we finish. The kitchen will be closed until next snack or whatever. Um, I think, yeah, I went over this. So if they say they don't like something, you can also say, how can I make it yummier for you? A lot of times it might be as simple as having ketchup with it, like something really weird, but if, as long as it's something familiar, like a ketchup or separating it out, that might help as well. Um, and then I always mentioned about the kitchen is closed and just saying um, that you chose not to have the dinner, but the next time that we'll be eating will be at the snack or the breakfast. Uh, and if they are really hungry before a meal and you know like there's a breakdown about to happen, you can offer something that's going to be a part of the meal, so maybe the vegetables or something um, right before the meal. Okay, so in the last few, whatever, t five minutes or 10 minutes, um, I'll just kind of quickly run through some other tips that you can do to enjoy the meal time a little bit more. So, and I, I mentioned a lot of these already. Um, so we'll kind of just recap a little bit, but keeping that meal time neutral. So again, the kids can are really good at sensing that frustration, the stress, the annoyance. Um, so again, just say like, you don't have to eat it if you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, and then just, um, avoid the, like just kind of move on with another topic or subject um, and again remember it's not your job to decide whether or not they're eating so if you keep that in mind of like that's not my job I don't have to feel pressured then it makes it a lot easier in the meal time 
Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't just offer it in fun ways. So you can make it more enticing for your kid too. So you can cut food into shapes. Not saying that you have to be like the Instagram mom or like Pinterest mom or anything, but it could be like you can name things special names like ants on a log is common, but anything that you're having you can make into fun like spaghetti with a chance of meatballs or burrito blaster, superpower tomato soup, like anything like that. Kids love that kind of thing and you can make it that kind of like more exciting for them. Um, muffin tins for snacks and lunches are really like anything novel like that or using like a spatula for a spoon like something different they find that really cool um, so that that might help too of just being creative in that sense a lot and then food play is okay so I get a lot of times of parents like don't play with your food or they kind of um, restrict that but actually that's a great way for them to um, get that exposure and make it fun for them rather than um, the, Eventually the food might actually get into the mouth that they're playing with it They might like they are touching it. They're smelling it. They're using all their senses and eventually and you could kind of encourage them of If they have like a, a boat or oh the boat goes in your mouth or it's not like the airplane thing where you're trying like oh the airplanes going in your mouth it's not pushing it like that but letting them play and they might actually start eating it too so that makes it less of a threatening thing and just knowing oh this food is is here and it's not being pressured on me um, and then also offer the same food in a variety of ways so just for instance you if you keep offering the same food over and over like brec um, breakfast is always oatmeal or lunch is always peanut butter and jelly eventually they'll get in a food jag where that's all they're ever going to want and if it's not that exact same way then they throw a fit because no I have to have the Skippy peanut butter and the grape jam and the same kind of bread. So even changing that simple thing up so you could offer different kind of nut butters, offer different jams, different breads, and that alone will help them not get in that food jag. Um, same with like oatmeal, adding different toppings or whatever. So that kind of thing of, it doesn't have to be completely different, but just presented in a different way. Um, be the role model, so that's kind of self-explanatory but putting the vegetables on your plate um, you trying foods all those kind of things will help them I mean we, even without saying anything I think that's the best way of just modeling it and the kids will pick up on that and then this is really hard but offer foods that you don't like so just because you don't like it doesn't mean that your kid doesn't like it um, and don't like your um, you you don't know if your kids not going to like it or like it if they never see it so Try to avoid like negative facial expressions and comments, but don't let your dislikes um, influence your kids' preferences. So keep that in mind. Um, I've already mentioned this a lot, but this is kind of one of the most important things of really sticking your ground on the kitchen is closed, we'll eat at this time, and having like kind of in advance knowing, okay, you could even have a clock, and even at a two and a half year old, they can't read, but if you had like lunches at 11 or noon, three is snack time, like if you labeled it like that, so you could say, oh, snack time is going to be when the hand hits that time, then they can see it and they know, okay, this, they know it's coming, it's not like, I think they, kids really like structure too, and so if they know when it is coming and they know it, it will be coming, then they feel a lot better and safe. Um, so that's an idea too, of they can point to the clock of like, oh, it's gonna be at this time, or uh, nighttime snack is at that time. And that will that will just was help and also just they'll come to the table a lot more hungry too and that in itself will help with meal time because if they've been grazing if they've been snacking all day then that's probably a reason too why they might not come to the table hungry shop together so another time for exposures is when you're out shopping I know it's a pain to have your kid with you so it doesn't have to be every time but once in a while uh, and then just tell your child what you're going what you're doing um, with the foods you're picking up at the aisles and kind of practicing like before you go into the store of what your expectations are and that will make it a little bit easier too. Um, even at two and a half they can help with meal prep so maybe tearing cilantro or um, they can pour things into like if you're doing baking or something that would be a great time for them to get involved. Um, and the, the kidscookmonday.org is a great site and it actually tells you like the directions and it tells what the adult can do and what the kids can do and then what you do together and so it's a, it's a way to break it down of oh this is what we can do together as a family 
this is another option of a discovery plate. So all these are just like suggestions, um, but I found that this really helps having that safe plate. So you present a new food item on this discovery plate. So it's not on their main plate because sometimes that can freak a child out, um, but you keep it separate so they can play with it. It's kind of a known thing that they don't have to eat it. I never want to pressure somebody to eat something, um, but encourage them to play with it or um, feel it, smell it, they can taste it, they can spit it out, but just know it's a safe plate for them to, and then it might not bother them as much if it's not on their actual plate too. And it keeps it separate, which is really important for kids. Uh, again, pairing a new food with a familiar food, I kind of already mentioned this, of when you're offering their favorite food, offer something different that maybe it's new for them. Uh, this is another great thing of for serving family style. So this is again a way of showing um, your kid that you trust them to decide like for them to know their innate needs of how much they need to serve themselves or how hungry they are. Uh, it gains also motor skills, patience, table manners, all that, but it also develops independence for them. And so as two and a half, um, it's, you're gonna probably have to help them a little bit. But there's a lot that I think we underestimate how much kids can do. And so with practice, they get a lot better at serving themselves. And yeah, they might take too much at first, but they slowly learn to, to listen to their bodies and know their hunger level. And so a lot of times we might be putting too much food on their plate. Um, and that can kind of, for some, it might feel controlling for kids or restrictive. Uh, so this is just a way for them to build that independence in a healthy way rather than like a rebellious way. I mentioned this so you can serve dessert with a meal, so it's no longer that reward. Um, and again, you can allow your kids to eat as much dessert or fruit as they want. So when you're offering it, um, remember that you've decided what you're offering, but then again, your child decides how much. Um, and you also decide when, so you could also say, we're not having dessert tonight, but we will have it tomorrow or the next night. Um, so that, again, they know that it's not forbidden, it's not something that's off limits, um, but they're just not having it tonight. Um, dips are always a fun way. Kids usually like dips. So if you know that they have some, like if your son really likes ranch or ketchup or whatever, feel free to, to offer that with it. Um, leave foods separate. So that's something that you've probably already done before, but that's something that's important too. And then really small plates. So again, large amounts can be really overwhelming. And I mean like really small so it could be a couple shreds of cucumber or carrot like one piece of little bite-sized chicken and you can always add more food to their plate but that way they won't get overwhelmed having this big plate it's kind of like similar if I go to like a restaurant like all like some ways where they have huge portions and it's like this big plate of whatever steak comes on my plate uh, and I'm like whoa I don't even know where to start and it's kind of it gets overwhelming uh, and so that's the same with kids so keeping it a little bit smaller for them. Uh, I already mentioned this too, um, avoiding the words yummy or yucky. Um, and it's really, I mean, I've tried it. It's really challenging to think up these descriptive words. So it's kind of fun, like you get better at it over time and then your kids can use those words to explain why they do or they don't like something, which really helps once you get the, once you start doing that. That's another one. So instead of saying like, oh, do you want blueberries or do you want chips or crackers for a snack and keep offering um, those different things, you can give them a limited choice. So this kind of gives them the illusion that they are getting a choice and it kind of builds that autonomy. So if you're comfortable, maybe you're, oh, we could have ham or turkey sandwich. You could ask them, um, do you want a turkey sandwich or a ham sandwich? Or do you want blueberries or strawberries? Or do you want carrots or broccoli? Something that you'd be fine either way serving. Um, but that way they're not getting like, what do you want for lunch? It's, do you want like ham or turkey? So they get a little bit of preference there. Uh, and then number 20, lastly, is just keep trying. So even if they, um, your ch child can't learn to like a food if he's never given the chance. Um, so providing those multiple exposures throughout the day. Um, and then just even if they didn't like it one day, just keep offering it because that even if they don't eat it, it's still an exposure. So keeping that in as a, keeping that in mind as a victory of like, okay, I know um, he saw it and that was an exposure and that was good. And the next time it might not be as unfamiliar familiar to him. So those tips will 
hopefully help. I'm gonna feel free to ask questions too. Um, again, so I do a lot of individualized one-on-one -on -one help. So if you're like, this is really helpful, or I have friends that I think this would be really helpful for, let them know. And you do get like a discount, 15% off um, as well. I have email, my website, you can look out more. I have an Instagram account that really gives like some tips on the child side and also the adult side. So feel free to look at that. Um, and then also for the individualized help, if you're like, this would be awesome, but I don't want to do it all on my own, you could have like another friend with you and then split the cost as well. So you could kind of like a mini group. Um, and that's really fine too. I've had people do that as well. So that's, uh, I think it. What, what questions do you have? If you have any, if not, um, that's okay. <clears throat> I guess one question I do have, like my son will eat anything that he's fed at daycare. Okay. Meat whatever vegetables sure. at home nothing oh. he lives on peanut butter and jelly okay and for like you know yeah yeah not like it's terrible but like he went through a phase where he loved eggs now he hates eggs and won't touch them like mm -hmm. he you know like one time like ate all of the steak and like one more steak and like hasn't tried it since like yeah. and that i think that's the struggle that i have is like the meat okay you know or like I mean, yeah. he, eats, he loves peanut butter so like he's getting his protein but like you know, the Point. vitamins and minerals and like yeah. that variety of, yeah. Well, I guess he eats meat once a day at daycare. <laughs> and think about but, it too, you know, yeah. Just, so I think with daycare, it's not making him peanut butter and jelly for dinner right. because we do make like casseroles and like, yep. you know, he won't touch it. I'm okay. like, well, I need something. You know, like I think that mom guilt and, of. Yep, exactly. And I totally get yeah. that. So a couple of things. I think at daycare, it could be the peer pressure, which it can be bad in some ways, but in a lot of ways, if he sees other people eating, it's like, yeah, oh, like you, I'm like, hey, he's get one good solid variety meal a day I take. Yeah, and so it, it might be that too. And then, yeah, I think like, oh, he's not eating, so I'm gonna make him peanut butter jelly. If he knows he's gonna get a peanut butter jelly, there's no way he's, and he loves it. Like, I love peanut butter jelly. If I knew yeah. I could have that every night, I would not be eating the casserole or this, I mean, I actually prefer peanut butter jelly over steak. So I'd be like, no, I'm good. I'll have a peanut butter and jelly. So if he knows that that's coming, if it's like a habitual thing or he yeah. knows an option, he's not going to eat. Where at daycare, I think it's like, this is what yeah, you're getting. Yeah, he knows. Um, and so I think that, I mean, it's hard, but again, offering the casserole or whatever, and um, he doesn't have to eat all of it, but again, you might even pick out parts of it or if there's... Make, asking like is this yummy like how can I make this yummier for you or how can I make what don't you like about it just to kind of get a feel but again like if you really liked eggs one time now he doesn't like eggs don't not offer eggs because you won't know again if he maybe he does is okay with it but it was just that one fluke time he was like over it um, so continue I think whatever don't base your menu based on him but just on what as a family you guys enjoy and uh, obviously if there's favorites I mean yeah. include those in you could have peanut butter and jelly for lunch on the weekends or something but I think the main thing is if you know something's coming he will he'll say no so that's one thing and then with the nighttime snack if he knows another nighttime snack is coming there's no incentive for him to eat dinner because yeah. he knows he can eat which butter. he usually doesn't because I make him a peanut butter and jelly okay <laughs> so he doesn't snack at night Yes. Oh, okay, so yeah, so that would be one if you yeah. want him to eat something. But I mean, for you, it's like okay, now I have to make another thing. This way, it's, this is what we're having. And it's like I know you like peanut butter jelly. We're not having that right now. I'll make sure that you will have it this weekend or later on, maybe in for breakfast or something like that if you wanted to. But that way, he knows he can get it later. But right now, this is what the family's eating. That might help too. Um, for meat wise, yeah, I just keep offering lots of different meats. And yeah, yeah. Like again, eat chicken nuggets for lunch at daycare, and then we'll touch my home or fish sticks or you know, like exact same foods. Yeah. Um, and it should, could be too of like he's maxed out for the day. Yeah. And so he's met like he just might not just be as not hungry, hungry at dinner. Then that could be something too. If he's two and a half and he ate really well breakfast and, he usually and does lunch, eat a good breakfast and lunch. Yeah. Then he actually might not be that hungry, and that's something to keep in mind too. Because like I mentioned, like. They don't need, there's like two ounces of protein a day. Um, and the calorie wise, it's really not, he doesn't need that much. Um, so that he could just be done for the day. And that's, that's
that's okay too. Yeah. If he ate really well one meal, it doesn't mean that he's not eating well the whole entire day. So I'm baffled by how little children need to eat. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, oh my goodness, that's what I eat in one snack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's like a frame, like we're so used to seeing adult portions, and so it's... An oversized adult portions. Right, yeah, and so then when we see normal-sized kids, it's like, oh, they really don't need that much. Like, two strawberries is a serving, basically, so, yeah. And they, that's just a suggestion, too. So they can yeah. eat way more than that, or they can eat less. That's just kind of like general. This would be like a normal size, but more than that's fine, less than that is... I mean, that might be something that they do too. So don't feel like, oh, they're not eating like the two ounces. It's, it fluctuates, like I said, like it fluctuates day to day. Yeah. Any, any other questions? They're all really common concerns. So yeah. don't feel like you're uh, no, alone, I, I, you're I alone normal, here. No, I know he's a normal toddler. Yeah, you're not alone. Yeah. In, but it, it, is, it doesn't negate that it is really frustrating yeah. too. Um, so I think the main thing is really like, that division of responsibility of like this is what we're eating if you don't want to eat it that's okay and just say like that's all right you don't have to eat it and really just being like not making it an issue and seeing how it goes it'll definitely be I'm not saying it'll be easy but like the first few days will definitely be hard and then after that he'll be like oh okay mom was serious and yeah. I need to eat something if I'm actually hungry he might not even be that hungry um, and if he's yeah Yeah, any other questions? Uh, I do have, I'll give you my business card. If you have friends, feel free to pass it on. Thank you. Um, and then, I don't know, 50, these are just 50 protein oh. ideas. A lot of parents are very Thanks. concerned about protein. So that's just some, another breakdown of all the different amounts and how many grams of protein are in there. So you can kind of see, did you want it, Kara? Or? Um, I, yeah, sure, I'll grab one. Thanks. How old are you? I don't have kids. No. But I'm just curious about protein. Now you know for yeah. yourself. They're good for yourself, too. Yeah. yeah. To know, like, some different snack options. And yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for braving the cold and coming out. I had shared your, you know, the little event or whatever on her name, neighborhood Facebook page. And somebody, like, said, like, oh, she used to work at Hy-Vee. She's great. So somebody. Oh, good. Her. <laughs> well, I know I had other friends that were, like, they just had other things going on, too, so they weren't able to make it. But, yeah. They were interested for sure. Yeah, well, got the recording, so awesome, cool. And where does the recording? Um, um in a couple weeks, usually it'll be on um, cable access. Okay. And then we'll also get a recording of it and add it to our collection. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So if people missed it, they can check it out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Oh no, the trains are no longer accessible.